Hello, welcome to Prajim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 26 of SQL Server. In this session, we'll learn about a few more date and time functions that are available. Specifically, we'll be talking about east date, day, month, year, and date name functions. And finally, we'll look at a practical example of using all these functions together. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch part 25 of this video series. Now, in the previous part, we have seen the different date time data types that are available in SQL Server. Depending on the requirement of our project, we choose the date time data type that's most appropriate. For example, if I want to store just the date part, then I use the date data type. On the other hand, if I want to store the date, the time, including the offset information, then I will choose date time offset. Okay, so basically these are the different data types that are available in SQL Server. Look at this, there is, if you look at the data types here, we have one called date time and the other one date time two. And if you look at the difference between these two, in terms of seconds for date time two, we have more precision. Okay. And we have also spoken about various other functions that are available in SQL Server to retrieve the current date and time. Okay, and we also have spoken about um, the UTC date and time concepts and time zone offset concepts in the previous session. So I strongly recommend to watch part 25 of this video series before continuing with the session. In this session, we'll talk about isDate function. So isDate function basically checks if the given value is a valid date, time, or date time. This function returns one for success and zero for failure. Okay, so if you look at the way we are using this function, is date, you're passing in something to this function. In this case, we are passing in pragim within single quotes. And look at this, can we convert this pragim into a valid date, time, or date time? We cannot. That's why this function returns zero, indicating that this is not a valid date and time. Okay, but on the other hand, if you look at the second example, this function is taking in another function, getDate, and we know that getDate function returns the current date and time. Okay, so as getDate returns a valid date and time, we are passing it to isDate function to check, okay, is it a valid date time? Obviously, it's a valid date time, so the function is returning one here. Okay, uh, and this is a, a hard-coded date and time value, you have year, month, day, and then hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds, which is a valid date and time. So the is date function is returning one. But on the other hand, look at the fourth example that we have here. It's a valid date as well. The only difference between the third and the fourth date is that with the fourth date, we have got more fractional seconds precision here. Okay, but then is date function returns zero. And if you look at the note here, for data type for date time two values, is date returns zero. Okay? And if you remember from the previous part, anything that has got you know the long precision for the seconds, it's a date time two data type. Okay. This is date time offset. Here also we have the long precision. Okay. So for these dates, is date returns false. So if you look at this example here. Okay, is date, if we execute this, this returns zero. Okay, so keep that in mind, is date function returns zero for date time two values. Okay, that's about is date function. And these are the examples. So obviously, if we execute all of them together, so is date for pregime returns zero. Get date returns the current date and time. It's a valid date, so it returns one. And this is a valid date and time, so that returns one, the third one. And finally, this is a date time two, data type date. So that's why is date returns zero for that. Pretty simple to understand. Okay, so next we will talk about day, month, and year functions. These are very, very simple to understand. Obviously, the day function returns the day number of the month of the given date. So, for example, if you look at uh, the examples here, I have this get date function. So, obviously, get date returns the current date and time. So, if you look at the current date and time on my machine, it is 
um, you know basically first of September 2012 so the day will return 1 here because get date returns September 1st 2012 and if you look at this here day where we have the hard coded date the date here is 31st of January 2012 so the day function returns 31 and if you look at the month it returns the month number of the year so obviously today is September 1st 2012 so month of get date returns you know number 9 for September and here this is January 31st 2012 so month function returns 1 which is very straightforward and along the same lines year function returns the EN number of the given date so get date returns the current system date and time so September 1st 2012 so year part is 12 I mean 2012 so this returns 2012 whereas the second one also returns 2012 because the year here is 2012 so basically depending on which part of the date you want you can choose either day month or year functions let's look at them practically real quick so obviously select get get date returns the current date and time so this should return us 9 so that returns 9 and this should return 31 because 31 is the day and along the same lines today is September so when we execute this this the first method call should return 9 and here the value the month value is hard coded to first month so it returns 1 and if you look at the year function obviously this is 2012 September 1st 2012 so the first one returns 2012 and the second one returns 2012 as well because we have it hard coded here alright so that's about day month and year functions date name function this is a very very useful function okay so date name function basically returns a string okay let's quickly prove that so if you look at this here select date name so if you look at the function itself sorry about that okay So select date, date name. If you look at the function itself, this function returns an nvar char, a string. Okay. Now, basically, there are two parameters that this function expects. The first parameter is like, which part of the day do you want? I mean, which part of the date do you want in string representation? Do you want the day or the weekday or the month? Okay. Now, look at this. I'm saying if you look at the second example specifically I'm calling date name function and I'm passing it weekday you know as the argument for the first parameter which is interval weekday and then I'm okay in this given date tell me for the 30th of September 2012 what is the weekday is it a Sunday Monday Tuesday or Wednesday okay so if you want to figure that out you can use date name function so when I execute this one it returns a Sunday similarly if you want to find the name of the month then you can pass month name for the interval so basically if you look at this date name function it expects two parameters okay the second parameter is the date upon which this function will operate and the first parameter you know you use that parameter to tell which part of the date do you want okay now this date part you know look at this the table here for example if I want weekday I can use weekday or I can just say DW now is it mandatory to remember all these date parts and abbreviations not really okay um, because if you just search MSDN you get it okay uh, but then these are very easy to remember as well for example if you want the year part you will just specify year if you want the month you will say month if you want the day you will say day if you want the weekday you will say weekday they will give you an integer number I mean uh, though this number is represented in a string format um, it's a number it's a day number okay uh, whereas if you want the weekday name we, we, we use weekday 
Similarly, you can you have several other date paths as well. For example, uh, seconds, milliseconds, microseconds, etc. So depending on your requirement, you choose the appropriate date path. And I suggest to use the full date path rather than the abbreviation because that will be clear. You know, when you look at that, it's more readable rather than saying dy or qq. Okay. So that's about date name. Now let's look at a very simple example of using this date name function. Okay. Now in our database we have a very simple table. So select star from TBL employees. So if you look at this table, it has got just you know three columns: ID, name, and the date of birth. Okay, just like this, ID, name, and date of birth. Now what I want to do is we want to write a query which returns an output something like this. I want the name of the person, date of birth, and the day they are born on. Okay, are they born on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? So depending on the date of birth, you will have to calculate that. And I also want the month number. Is it 12th month, 9th month, 8th month, whatever? And the month name. Is it December? August whatever and basically the year and obviously you would have guessed it by now how to write this query we use uh, the functions that we have just discussed and if you look at the query it's pretty simple we want the name as it is so we will say name and then the date of birth as it is we'll say date of birth so that's pretty simple next we want the day okay the weekday is it a Monday Tuesday Wednesday so I can use the date name function pass weekday for the date part parameter and date of birth column work on date of birth from the date of birth find out what is the weekday and return that as day okay and then next we want the month number okay if you want the month number in the previous session I mean the previous slide we have seen how to use the month function that will give you the month number okay so we are basically using that month function and we are telling okay operate on date of birth column and return the month number and similarly I want the month name next so I am passing in month as the date part for the date name function and operate on date of birth and return the month name and finally I want the year so we are using the year function which is pretty simple and we have that exact same query written here so if you look at that this is exactly the query that we have and when we execute this query you should see the output that we want on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET and C-Sharp interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day